Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk more specifically about how to graph and uh, write ellipses. Before we get started, let's review some things that we talked about uh, when we covered just basics of ellipses. We talked about uh, the formula for horizontal major axis. In this case, we have uh, a x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1, where h and k are the center of the ellipse. a squared is the largest value uh, denominator. b squared is going to be less than a squared. a is going to be the distance from the center to the vertices. Uh, center to the vertices, so there are two vertices. And the b value is going to be the distance from the center to the co-vertices along the minor axis. So equation for the horizontal uh, major axis ellipse and then also the equation for a vertical major axis. Now what we've done is we've just swapped the x minus k, uh, y minus k and x minus h squared values. Uh, we've kept a squared the same. a squared is still going to be the designation for the distance from the center to the vertices. b is still going to be the distance from the center to the co-vertices. Right, and then we talked about um, horizontal major axis, how to identify it. What you do is you look for the term uh, and the denominator that has the denominator with the largest value in this case, it's going to be 7 squared. So in the first example, uh, so you look for the variable in that term, the variable is x. x designates a horizontal major axis. In the second equation, I have 8 squared, which is greater than uh, 2 squared. 8 is going to be my a value. 8 corresponds to the y variable. y variable tells me that my axis is going to be vertical. All right, so let's talk about uh, graphing ellipses. So there are five steps in graphing. We're going to go through each of these in detail and I'm going to give you an example uh, for them and then we're going to talk about writing equations for ellipses. So graphing ellipses. First step, identify the coordinates for the center. Step two, identify the coordinates for the vertices and the co-vertices. Step three, identify the equations for the major and minor axes. Step four, identify the coordinates for the foci. And then finally we're going to finish by graphing the ellipse. Right, we're given an equation for an ellipse, x minus 3 squared over 7 squared plus y minus 2 squared over 4 squared is equal to 1. We want to identify the coordinates for the center. Uh, they're the h and k values. In this case, my h, k value is 3, 2. So that's the, those are the coordinates for the center. I'm going to go ahead and graph that, and it's going to look something like this. So I've already drawn the uh, rough sketch of the ellipse. My center is going to be 3, 2. And I've also identified at the same time, and we'll go through this as a step, whether the axis is major or minor. And I can tell really quickly because, again, I take a look at the term that has the highest uh, value for a denominator, in this case, 7 squared. I look at the term, it shows me that my variable is x, so I know it's going to be a horizontal major axis. So this time I can uh, draw my orientation. My orientation is vertical, a major axis. The elongated uh, sections are going to be going to the left and to the right, so those are the vertices. All right, so let's move on to the next step. All right, so next step, I'm going to identify the coordinates for the center, which I've already done. Uh, I said they were 3 and 2. Uh, next, I'm going to identify the A and B values. Of course, the A value is the larger of the two. So a is equal to 7. And a squared, remember, is 7 squared. So don't get confused with that. Um, if I gave you something like this as part of an equation for uh, an ellipse, and I said this is the first term, uh, I said y plus 3 squared over 16, then my a value becomes 8, and my b value is 4. All right, so my a value is 7 in this case. My b value is 4. Now I'm going to move A units along the major axis from the center in both directions to find the coordinates uh, of the vertices, and B units along the minor axis in both directions to find the coordinates for the co-vertices. So we said the major axis is uh, horizontal, so we're going to move 7 units to the left, and we're going to move 7 units to the right, <clears throat> and we will find our vertices. Then we're going to move 4 units up, and then 4 units down from the center to find our coordinates for the co-vertices. So let's go ahead and graph that. I had 3, 2 as my center. I moved 7 units to the right and 7 units to the left. That gave me uh, negative 4, 2 and 10, 2. And then I moved 4 units up and 4 units down. That gave me, uh, for the co-vertices, 3, 6 and 3, negative 2. 
All right, moving on, we're going to talk about the major and minor axes. So identifying the equation for the major and minor axes, we want to look again for the denominator that has the largest value. Uh, we've oriented the equation this way, so, and we've already talked about the fact that the major axis is going to be, uh, is going to be horizontal. Identify the coordinates for the vertices, co-vertices, and center. We've already done that in one and two, so remember we said that our equation, or the uh, coordinates for the center is three, two, a value is equal to seven, and the b value is equal to four. Uh, now we want to identify the equation of the line that runs through the vertices in the center. So we want to identify the equation for the major axis. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the graph and we're going to take a look at the major axis and we see that the value for y equal to y is equal to 2 does not change. So the equation for the uh, major axis is going to be y is equal to 2. And then we take a look at the vertical minor axis and we see that the x value does not change. In this case, x is going to be equal to 3. Now it's pretty easy to uh, tell what the major and minor axes are going to be. All you need to do is to look at the values here. So y minus 2 is going to be, I'm sorry, y is equal to 2 is going to be our uh, major axis and x is equal to 3 is going to be our minor axis. All right, so we've done three of the five steps so far. The next step is for us to identify the location of the foci. So first we'll want our a and b values, which we've already derived. And again, I'll write them down. a is 7, b is equal to 4. And then we're going to use the formula for the foci of the ellipse to solve for c. And the formula is c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared, where c is the distance from the center to each of the individual foci. So in this case, I have c squared is equal to a squared, or 7 squared, minus uh, b squared, which is 4 squared. And that gives me c squared is equal to 33, or c is equal to plus or minus the square root of 33. Now, when you're solving these problems or writing equations, a lot of times uh, the text or the problems will give you the c value and the a value or the B value and the A value, and you have to determine the C value, or the C value and the B value, and you have to determine the A value. You need all these values in order to graph the ellipse. The C value is not stated in the equation, so ultimately you're going to have to derive one of these values using this equation, C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. And again, A squared is the distance from the center to the vertices, I'm sorry, A is the distance from the center to the vertices, B is the distance from the center to the co-vertices, and c is the distance from the center to each of the foci. So we've determined that uh, the foci are going to be plus or minus root 33 from the center. So we go ahead and graph them. And I have 3 minus uh, root 33, 2, and 3 plus root 33, 2 as my foci. All right, so now I am finished graphing my ellipse. I have the vertices, I have the co-vertices, I have the major and minor axes, uh, I have the foci, and I have the center all derived from this particular application, all right, or equation. All right, now we're going to move on to writing equations for ellipses. So we're going to take the knowledge that we've already learned and apply it to looking at a graph and then writing an equation. So there are five steps in writing equations for ellipses. You can pause and review this if you want. Now I'm going to move on in just a second. And we're going to go through each of these one by one. Okay, so the first uh, in writing equations for ellipses is to determine the orientation of the major axis, either horizontal or vertical, and then identify the correct formula. So I see in this case that I have a vertical major axis. Remember, the major axis runs along the elongated portion of the ellipse. And I'm going to identify the correct formula. Since I know it's vertical, I know the a value is going to be uh, beneath my y variable. So I have y minus k, and remember k always goes with y and h with x. So I have y minus k squared over a squared plus x minus h squared over b squared is equal to 1. Now I want to populate these values for uh, h and k, and I want to determine the center with the values, hk. So I take a look, my center is 7, negative 2. So now I can rewrite my equation as y. In this case, it's going to be plus 2 because I have a minus a minus 2 squared over a squared is equal to x minus 7 
squared over b squared. So my hk values are 7, negative 2, that's the center, and they turn into y plus 2 squared over a squared is equal to x minus 7 squared over b squared. So now I need to find my a squared and my b squared values. All right, so first we're going to determine the distance between the center and the vertices. So all I have to do is march off uh, the distance along the major axis from the center to uh, one of the vertices, and you can see 7, negative 2 to 7, 5 gives me a distance of 7 units uh, vertically. So I know my A value is going to be equal to 7, and then I can march off uh, from the center to the co-vertices along the minor axis. I go from 7 to uh, 4, so my distance here is going to be 3 units, and distance here is going to be 7 units. So I know my B value is going to be equal to 3. All right, now uh, I can write the equation for the ellipse. I have my A value and I have my B value and I have the uh, center. So now it becomes uh, Y plus 2 squared, which we already determined from the prior slide, over A squared, which is 49, plus X minus 7 squared over b squared, which is 9, is equal to 1. Now in some cases you're going to be given a c value for, you're going to be given the coordinates for the uh, foci, so you'll be able to determine the c value. So you might end up needing that in order to figure out what the value is for a and b. Alright, that's it for graphing and writing translated ellipses. Please come and join us in a discussion about any of the other conic circles, parabolas, uh, and hyperbolas in any of the next edition on conics and on math.